Uh, this is Martino Brian, and may you introduce yourself to the viewers. I am Father Paul Peter, Dr. Rome. Rome is a, when I say Dr. Rome, it doesn't mean that I, I, sh I, am, I should be having an hospital. I have a PhD in philosophy, that's where I got my doctorate. And uh, I am the administrator of Archbishop Flynn Secondary School and uh, the program coordinator of Archbishop Flynn Rural Development Education Center, which is this very uh, farm in which we are now located. Well, uh, that's a, a good introduction. Father, can you let the viewers know what inspired the school to give birth to this farm? Two very important things. One, as I said, it is a rural education center. We saw that the backbone of our uh, country is agriculture. And the first thing we wanted to do is to teach our children at all levels to manage a small sizable garden even at all. So that they can get uh, things like vegetables, uh, things like carrots, things, simple, simple things that can be done at the backyard. So we needed first, our first target group was our children. But our intention was also to reach the families. So the only way of reaching their parents was reaching the children. If they learn something from school in agriculture, they go back home and then they pass it on to their parents. The purpose also was the difficulty in paying school fees. Just 10 square meters of land planted with onions already pays up of the school fees of a child. It's just simply putting this into use and then you have some income in the end. Mm. That was the first inspiration. The second was to provide food for the, for the children. Because we realized even if you have money, sometimes there is no food at all. Mm. Just take last year. Last year has been very difficult. You can go with your money to the market, but there's no food to buy. We had no problem last year because we had over 60 tons of maize that we cultivated ourselves. So we were able to feed our stores for feeding the students. But also we were pressed so hard with the feeding students, and we saw that our expenses, our highest expenses, were on feeding. And then we said, why don't we acquire land? and then cultivate our own food. In the process of cultivating food for feeding our students, we are educating them to continue promoting agriculture because we have enough land. That is why we bought 263 acres here, and we started farming in a very small and uh, very uh, systematic way. We want to take baby steps every time we move on. Well, now, uh, looking at the side of government contribution, uh, as we were coming along the way, we saw the government road was very poor, and uh, the roads constructed by the farm or the Bishop Flint was enjoyable, despite it was tarmac road. So, are there plans that government are making to make some contribution, like to roads or any other uh, things to help this? Our biggest challenge right from the beginning was access. We tried uh, three other uh, sides, uh, one to the, to the western side, another one to the eastern side. It was very difficult because they were all places that would lock water uh, along the way. Then we tried the, the road you use now for coming. And uh, we managed to put in that road because it was very difficult. We would cultivate enough, but taking it away from here to the consumers was very difficult. Then we had that access road. Sincerely, we would want that government comes in because our intention is to make this a one-stop center for any farmer, for animal industry, husbandry, I mean, for animal husbandry, for crop husbandry, come, and we don't need qualification. We don't need papers. We need you to come with your energy, with your interest, learn the trade you want, go away with it, implement it at all. Now, we are working in close collaboration with government. We are actually very good friends with uh, but the uh, local, government. local government because the, uh, the DAO, a district agricultural officer, is a constant visitor here. The district uh, fisheries officer is a great friend and is giving us actually finger links 
that the government has given is going to give us also because we have a fish pond here. We are doing fish pond. And uh, for the road, we really want to beg government to help us open road so that we have access, even our products can reach elsewhere. One thing I tell you, we produce watermelon every year. Tons and tons of watermelon. In 2020, we ended up using our watermelons for feeding pigs because there was no market for it. There was lockdown. Everything was shut down. We fed the pigs with watermelon. Sweet watermelon. We couldn't get market. We couldn't access. The roads were so bad. Even if we wanted to take them out, we would not take them out. Our main road here, and then the other one going to keep the place and do us uh, some, some favor there. And then electricity. Because we want to do value addition. We don't want to carry back. We want to purify our maize from here, produce coke from here, and take it out there when it is a finished product. People cheat on us a lot because they get our raw products, process it, and sell it five times the price we sell to them. Government is also, uh, is also giving us irrigation system, 10 acres of irrigation system, which is a good collaboration with government, and we are very, very, very grateful. That. So the intervention of government is already on two fields. National, uh, this one is, is, is it national water and, uh, and environment, something of that. They are the one giving us irrigation, and then uh, the fisheries are also helping us with the with the fish pond. So I appeal and appeal very strongly that locally government can can help us so that we educate our farmers. Our intention is to uplift everyone around us so that they can also through agriculture prosper. Well, uh, as we wind up, I have three, two to three questions to uh, ask you further. The first one is um, talking about uh, the history of this place. You are somebody who grew up in northern Uganda, I believe, and you know what happened, the LRA. Are you not as aware of that history and also, could it be part of what transpired uh, at Bishop Flynn to implement this? And also, another thing is, uh, what do you look into as your future prospect? Oh, great. Now, on the first question, our donors are aware that we had had uh, 22 years of war. People were reduced into the camps. They became totally dependent on donated food. Children grew up without any sense of work and responsibility. And one of our intentions, making it an education center, is to teach the young people that through work we can prosper. And only through work that we can economically grow. So it, it is also a, a center of rehabilitation, bringing back the glory of the Ajuri. Ajuri, we are not people who would, who would beg for food. Actually, we are not people who would measure food in kilograms. Food we are measured in baskets. Eh? Aduho, that is how you used to measure food, not kilograms. You don't ration food to a jury. You just eat and leave, and then tomorrow you continue. But now, we are living in, in, that, uh, in that kind of... Uh, Begging the yeah, mindset. Yeah. Now, our other prospect is to make this place a complete industry, in which we do from growing our plants into the finished products. We, are, we have actually identified already eight farmers group around us here. We want to put them together, form co cooperatives, and we are going to this farm here you're seeing. In the next 20 years, we shall have processing plants here for oil, sunflower from sunflower. We shall have for, for maize, maize flour that we shall have. We shall have for tomatoes, for onions, everything we want to process and sell finished products. That is why I insist that government should give us electricity. If we have electricity, all this will be done. Well, let's we wind up and uh, as you send your last words or greetings to the viewers, uh, I would like you to let them know if you have plans for Green Climate Pact of Glasgow. In other words, I mean environmental protection uh, plans. Oh, great. In fact, this farm is composed of different parts. We have uh, that ecological concern. We, we are the first to take care of ecological concern, actually. 
we have uh, agroforestry here in this farm, that we have part of the farm that will only be purely trees, both domestic and wild. And we are also going to put uh, uh, fruit trees. What we believe in is a food chain. Nothing is thrown away. Everything is taken back into creation and creation renews itself. So you are you're doing complete process, parts of agriculture. Exactly. The last, the, many, many of the people only think the last part of agriculture is consumption, forgetting the other one of uh -huh. waste, waste management. Waste management for us we put back. You know we have even animals. From animals, they go back to the soil, and mm. we have complete food chain. And we are not ready to make the mistakes people have already made in agriculture. We know that nature feeds itself. As long as you allow it to feed itself, it will always be perfect. You don't need to introduce useless things to the soil. Mm. You take whatever is left over, put it back into the soil, and soil regenerates itself. So this is what we want to do. We don't want to make mistakes that industrial countries have made. They already made their mistakes. Mm -hmm. We want to show them that our fertile land can remain fertile as long as we do, for example, here we do crop rotation. We put in legumes that bring in nitrogen fixing bacteria into the soil. We know who is a, a heavy feeder and we don't put heavy feeders in the same place every year. <laughs> we take heavy feeders to feed where yeah. there is nutrient, and we put back nutrient by using other covering plants. Mm. So I thank you people so much, and we ask for your support. Support in ideas, support financially, support even by visit and encouragement. We want to make our country, our northern Uganda, the food basket again. With two seasons, how can we fail? We have two seasons, cultivating season. You can have harvest twice a year. We have also apiculture here. We are keeping bees for our pollination. So we don't want our bees to die. We keep them, we eat the honey, but we know that bees are instrumental in pollinating our plant, our plants. We have fish pond. The fish will help us also regenerate. So all this is a complete circle that we are still establishing. So give us animals, give us a fish, help us keep bees, help us cultivate food and protect our land. Thank you very much for listening and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to the thousand of your viewers and I encourage them to subscribe to this channel mm. so that we all uh, stay connected and we grow together. Well, thank you.